dear students today in this lecture we are uh, taking up bcs theory as the topic of discussion from our uh, previous lectures you have learned about the basics of superconductivity superconductivity is the property of a few materials of showing zero resistivity at a temperature below the critical temperature it was defined that the critical temperature is the temperature at which a normal conducting material becomes superconductor when it is cooled from a sufficiently high temperature let us say from room temperature and superconducting materials are formed to show zero resistivity hence they are called superconductors because normal conductors when they are cooled from high temperature even down to zero degree kelvin they won't show zero resistivity even at zero degree kelvin we have understood that these normal conducting materials have some residual resistivity because of the impurities so impurity scattering results in some resistivity even in zero degree kelvin but in the case of superconductors when the temperature of the material is brought down to lower value at a specific value of temperature there will be an abrupt fall in the resistivity for example when the superconductor was invented by kamerling once in 1911 mercury was cooled down to 4.2 degree kelvin at which it abruptly lost the resistivity means its resistivity became zero and in the previous classes we have learned even about the meissner effect that is the diamagnetic property shown by the superconductors and the critical magnetic field that is the magnetic field required for a superconductor to lose its superconductivity in this class let us concentrate on the bcs theory which explained the reason or the origin of superconductivity this is the first microscopic theory proposed by berdin cooper and schrefer the name berdin is not very unfamiliar to you because while studying about the transistor you have heard this name because the invention of transistor was made by berdin and at a later stage he even invented the photocopier he is the two times nobel prize receiver so that berdin name is very familiar to you so cooper had provided a theory to talk about the superconducting properties of the materials berdin cooper and schrefer together proposed a theory which is known as bcs theory it was experimentally verified in 1960 by gaver by electron tunneling this particular theory gives insight on lattice vibrations even in absence of thermal energy and the energy gap of superconductors we know that the conductors do not have energy gap the energy gap of a conductor is said to be zero but for a superconductor this energy gap is not zero bcs theory gives an idea about existence of energy gap even in a superconductor it even talks about the quantum mechanical phenomenon heisenberg uncertainty principle is involved wave function theory is involved the quantum mechanical phenomenon is involved 
Bose-Einstein condensation is involved and finally the zero resistivity of superconductor. In order to have zero resistivity, in order to understand why a superconductor can have zero resistivity at a specific temperature, it is very necessary to understand BCS theory. This particular theory addresses a few questions that are what makes electrons to behave unusually because in a normal conductor although electrons conduct electricity their behavior is different in the superconductors. What brings electrons together? They move without resistance in a superconductor. Why best conductors such as uh, copper, gold, silver do not show superconductivity? For all these questions we find the answers in the BCS theory. Let us understand in detail ago. We know that the electrons are basically negatively charged and uh, if the two electrons are come closer they will experience a repulsive force that is the Coulombian repulsive force. Here BCS theory talks about the two electrons which are getting attracted but via a, an intermediate agent the phonon. Now let us understand how the two electrons are paired together or they are brought together in terms of the phonons. We were talking about the critical temperature. We have understood that the critical temperature is the temperature at which a normal conducting material turns into superconductor when it is cooled from a high temperature. That critical temperature is in fact depends on the ionic mass. There is a relation established which is Tc is inversely proportional to square root of ionic mass m. That means the critical temperature is depending inversely on the ionic mass. In case ionic mass is infinity, Tc is 0. That means for a superconductor to have non-zero critical temperature, ionic mass must be finite. This relation also infers that the transition of a superconductor from normal conducting state to the superconducting state depends on the dynamics of ionic motion. According to BCS theory, a superconducting material can be regarded as consisting of positive ions. And these positive ions are binding together in terms of an elastic force. As an example, this diagram can be seen. Here one can observe that the ions, positive ions are located at their sides. And there is an arrangement of these ions due to the elastic force between them. That means if they are distorted, they can vibrate about their mean position. Here, in case an electron enters into such a lattice, since electron is basically negatively charged, that will experience an attractive force by the positively charged ion. That means when electron enters into this particular lattice, the electron will pull the positively charged ions. The lattice distortion takes place. The ions will vibrate about their mean position. Lattice vibrations are in fact quantized. 
Such quantized lattice vibrations are known as the phonons. Remember, these phonons are not similar to the, the phonons which are produced in normal conductors at high temperatures. They are the thermal phonons. But here the thermal energy is very, very negligible. It's very small. That is the reason why the phonons that are produced by the electrons in a superconductor at temperature below T are virtual phonons. These are the virtual phonons. So the electron coming to the vicinity of the positive ions will distort the lattice. So lattice distortion takes place. And this distorted lattice is comprising of positive charge. We can compare it with the dust, a cloud of dust formed by a car moving on the dusty field, on the dusty road. The car is not visible to an observer just behind the car, but the dust cloud of the dust is visible. Similar to that situation, here the electron during its movement, vicinity of the positive ions, distort the ions so that the distorted ions appear as a cloud of positive charge for another electron coming to the same vicinity. So if another electron enters into the vicinity of the first electron on the distorted lattice, now that second electron that is a negatively charged electron feels as if the first electron is positively charged by virtue of these positively charged ions. A question may arise in the mind that why the second electron is not regarded as the positively charged one. That is actually the difference in the time scale. Due to the difference in the time scale, the first electron virtually forms a positive charge due to the positively charged ions, distorted ions and second electron acts as negatively charged particle. Now this second electron and positive electron, so I mean the first electron are attracting each other because of the phonons. This means this distorted lattice is responsible for creating an attractive force between the first electron and the second electron. This force of attraction is higher than the force of repulsion between the first and second electrons which are basically negatively charged. So Coulombian force is dominated by the attractive force produced due to the distorted ions or distorted lattice. So, quantized lattice vibrations are produced by the electrons. They are the photons. So, electrons are paired together because of the because of the phonons or the distorted lattice. This pair of electrons is known as Cooper pair. And this Cooper pair will be associated with a wave function according to the quantum mechanics, the wave function is used to describe the phonon field. It has been established the wave, that the wave function associated with the Cooper pair is spread over a large volume or throughout the material of the superconductor so that there will be a cooperative movement among the Cooper pairs such that they move without any resistance. There will be no scattering of Cooper pairs and they move. And here one more important point to be understood. That when the Cooper pairs are formed, energy lowering takes place. Energy of the electrons comes down. Energy of the phonons is higher than the energy of electrons. As a consequence of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, the energy conservation need not take place here because of the short life of phonons. 
So, in a superconducting material, in the superconducting state, because of the short life of the phonons, energy conservation does not exist, and phonons have higher energy as compared to electrons. So, energy lowering, energy exchange between the electrons also takes place during the energy exchange via the phonons the energy of electrons come down phonon energy increases this energy difference if it is higher the interaction between the electrons will be stronger this electron lattice electron interaction is stronger if the energy difference is higher. The energy of the bound pair, that is the Cooper pair, is very small as compared to the pair of two electrons in the free state. That means, for example, in a normal conductor, if you consider two electrons, those two electrons will have energy higher as compared to the energy of the bound pair in a superconductor. This energy difference is the energy gap of a superconductor. The difference between the energy of the bound pair, that is the Cooper pair, and the energy of the pair of electrons in the free state. That difference is the energy gap. You know that energy gap of superconductor is very small, of the order of 10 power minus 3 electron volt. In a semiconductor, we know that it is of the order of 0 0.7, 1, 1 1.1, 1.5 electron volt. And for a conductor, we say that energy gap is zero. Even a superconductor can have zero energy gap when its temperature approaches critical temperature. At temperature T equal to zero degree Kelvin, the energy gap is maximum. What does it indicate? The energy gap of a superconductor is function of time. Sorry, function of temperature. Whereas in the semiconductor and conductor, energy gap is constant. So, energy gap of a superconductor is a function of temperature. It is maximum at 0 degree Kelvin and 0 at the temperature equal to critical temperature. What does it mean? Cooper pair formation is complete at temperature equal to 0 degree Kelvin and Cooper pair is broken at temperature is equal to Tc. So, Cooper pairs are formed only at the temperature below critical temperature. Cooper pair formation is not possible in the best conductors because there is weak interaction of electrons with the phonons. Whereas in selective materials wherein the electron phonon interaction is strong superconductivity can exist. This is the reason why best conductors such as gold, silver, copper do not exhibit superconductivity. Whereas some other materials in which the electron phonon interaction is stronger, the superconductivity is possible. BCS theory in this explains the Cooper pair formation and such a Cooper pair is actually responsible for superconductivity and Cooper pairs can move over a long distance within the superconducting material without any obstruction. One more important point to remember that the energy lowering is very dominant or considerable if the two electrons of opposite spin and momenta are formed. If the Cooper pair is formed by the two electrons of opposite spin and momenta, then the energy lowering is considerable. It has been proved by, theoretically proved by Cooper, that in a superconductor, Cooper pair that is formed due to the bound pair of two electrons should have two electrons of opposite spin and momentum. You can take an example of a truck moving towards south 
at the speed of 80 km per hour and another truck moving towards north with the same speed 80 km per hour, the sum of the momenta is 0. So here in the case of the formation of Cooper pair, the energy lowering is high if the two electrons forming the Cooper pair are of opposite spin and momentum. This is very important point to remember. The attractive force which I talked about is considerable such that the Coulombian force is suppressed. That is the reason why in the Cooper pair the attractive force is developed. I was talking about the Bose-Einstein condensation. We have learned from the discussion, the present discussion that the energy gap exists in a superconductor. Normal electron state will be above the energy gap. Superconducting paired electron state is below the energy gap. Energy gap, as I mentioned, is zero at temperature equal to Tc and at temperature equal to 0 degree Kelvin it is maximum. This indicates that or based on this fact BCS theory predicted that many electron condensation to ground state takes place with some allowed excited states too that is at the temperature between 0 degree Kelvin and Tc. And at Tc, Cooper pair is broken so that the material becomes superconductor. So this is the BCS theory. In summary, we can say that BCS theory talks about formation of Cooper pair. Cooper pair is the pair of two bound electrons and those two electrons are the electrons of opposite spin and momentum. So an electron entering into the lattice creates lattice distortion due to an attractive force between that entered electron and the, lat the ions and distorted ions create an attractive force for another electron coming to the vicinity. In this way the first electron and the second electron are getting attracted via the lattice vibration, quantized lattice vibrations which are known as phonons. Such a pair is known as Cooper pair and this Cooper pair can travel throughout the material as the wave function associated with this Cooper pair is spread over the material, complete volume of the material. So the Cooper pair is moving or Cooper pairs are moving without obstructions due to the cooperative movement. Hence the superconductor does not have resistance or resistivity is zero.